Hi, this is Yohsabdin Bhartia Bhartiya and welcome to another episode of State of Energy. And today we have Robert Stieg, product owner of IT system for flexibility at Annexis and Daniel Witch, developer of IT systems for flexibility at Annexis. Robert, Daniel, it's great to have you folks on the show. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it's my pleasure to have you folks here. Uh, today we are going to talk about Shapeshifter project. But before we talk about the project, I would love to know a bit about the company. So talk about what do you folks do? Annexis is one of the largest DSO in in, uh, in the Netherlands. So we uh, uh, are transporting electricity and gas. And um, yeah, as a company, uh, we of course have to do with the energy transitions and all the, uh, the new um, energy that's coming into uh, to our electricity net. Uh, if you look at a uh, modern world, when you look at uh, energy electricity, the world has kind of changed because of renewables. We're also uh, using you know, electric cars. So there are a lot of folks, they have solar panels. We are putting electrons back into the grid as well. So from your perspective, how it has changed the whole landscape or market, which also means that we will need more I mean, solutions to tackle that new kind of challenge. I think that's one of the biggest challenges that we have as a DSO. So uh, indeed, what you're saying, the, the electricity market is, is changing very rapidly. Uh, so and that's why we are uh, as a team building like new automated IT systems to have flexibility in the in the electricity uh, grid. Now let's talk about the Shapeshifter project. Talk about what is the project all about? The goal of Shapeshifter is to have a communication protocol um, between us as a DSO and what we call aggregators, so flexibility providers. Uh, and we want to standardize that protocol to have a, a easy way to communicate uh, about flexibility. Can you talk about what was the need for this project? What was the problem that you were seeing uh, that you're like, hey, no, we need this project? We found that we needed a standardized way of communicating to the, the aggregators to, to communicate about uh, the, the power, the flexibility that, that, we, that we need from them. We, we have a process where we predict that something will be overloaded, that there will be congestion. And then this protocol was suitable for us. It's a, a further development of an existing protocol, USEF, that was already used within Europe. And so we built upon that and we created or we used it as the universal flexible trading protocol, uh, specifically to be able to cater for bilateral contracts that we can make agreements and seal the deal with that communication protocol. And that's something that wasn't easily possible. Can you talk about the origin of the project? Where was it created and when it became part of LF Energy? We already tested the protocol in, in like a, a pilot project. And um, we saw that it was not a, yeah, something that was easy to use and something that was also general. So there were a lot of different protocols. So uh, that's why we just was uh, that we, uh, uh, we contacted our colleague DSOs in the Netherlands, and uh, just like uh, in a session, we brainstormed of how can we do that in a way that we can benefit all of us, so that we can create one protocol for all of the uh, flexibility providers and DSO in the Netherlands, and that's why we started Shapeshifter to have one protocol in the Netherlands and not different protocols, and um, so that's how we started Shapeshifter. Uh, I think there was also a sense of urgency because the legislation in the Netherlands was changed. We, we needed to oblige to the government and we needed to comply with some laws. And this protocol was well tested. We tested it in some experiments. We tested it in the old forms. So it was also a, a pretty easy decision to go and try to invest with the DSOs in the Netherlands together on getting this protocol to be able to communicate that, to comply to the new um, law of congestion management in the Netherlands. Can you talk a bit about what was the new law? Yeah, so the new law um, in the Netherlands says that we have to um, give more transport cap capacity away to the, our customers than there is technical possible. So, and the, the, the capacity that is above the technical limit, we have to solve that uh, with congestion management and flexi flexibility so that the the spread of using of transportation of electricity is like uh, more flattened out during the day. So that's 
the goal of the the, the flexibility uh, market to just flatten out the transportation of uh, of electricity so that we can optimize the use of the electricity net. Can you also talk a bit about uh, there are other uh, project LLF uh, energy like flash power is also there, which is also protocols, but that that is looking at different problem. So when we look at other project LLF energy, uh, how closely you work with other projects, you learn from them or like help them leverage them. Sometimes some projects might have overlap, sometimes there may be gap. A nice thing is that we we closely work together with the uh, the other DSOs. Uh, Aleander, for instance, they also uh, invest heavily into open source and they use even uh, open staff. That's one of the components for Linux Foundation Energy for their own uh, forecasting. Um, we also look into something that's already uh, in use globally, that's OpenADR. And one of the persons that works for us is the one who uh, created the, the Open Leader Python, Python implementation that's also part of the Linux Foundation Energy. Uh, and we recently, uh, unfortunately, Robert didn't have time. I visited together with some people from Aliander to uh, Paris to the uh, Linux Foundation Energy Summit 2023. And there we also did a talk together with the other DSO about Shapeshifter. Um, and there we are also looking into, all right, what other components are also available of the suite. And we look into those. And also when we have internal discussions here, we try to look, hey, we now might have some proprietary system. Can we maybe look into yeah, investigating if one of the LV components would be a good fit for the future and how would we get there? How mature is the project today? As you said, you know, it was kind of reaction to a, a, a law or regulation in the Netherlands. How mature is the project? Is it ready for production? Is it being already used in production? And if you can also talk about the community which is involved with this project. So we are going to production this month, <laughs> this from the Nexus site. So the project is mature. Uh, of course, we didn't test it yet in a real production environment, but that will happen this month or, or next month. Uh, so it is usable, um, and uh, the, all the, the, the needed code and the testing is done, and also the documentation is um, uh, is completed. So uh, it is a productionable, productionable. Next to that, the GoPax platform in the Netherlands, who's kind of a broker between the DSOs and the market, they already have a full implementation running and they perform some tests in production, uh, if you can say it like that, and they were successful in that. And we also know that in uh, that a company is Scottish Power Energy Networks in combination with Gridimp, they also have a full implementation already running that they use for their customers, but they are an aggregator role. As you were earlier talking about and other companies, and uh, of course I was in Paris as well, it was kind of great to see uh, all these companies doing open source. How important is uh, open source for your company? How much open source do you folks do? It's becoming more and more important. So. Uh, I think when I look at a couple of years back, open source was not used within the Nexus organization. And now, because of the energy transition, we see the need to work together with other DSOs and other educators to just have one uh, development team to create new uh, IT. And uh, yeah, if you can do it alone, but if you do it together, you have... Of course, you are, you are. It's it is cheaper, and you also have more impact when when you do it together. And open source is just like a, a very good way to do that. The role of Inexus as a company also changed, like many companies now, because of the energy transition. A company that formerly only put cables in the ground uh, for electricity and also uh, pipes for gas now changes into an IT company. So if you look at the growth that we that we had uh, for the past four years at least, if not longer, is that we needed to change. And I, th I think the first thing is really easy. That's the commodity, like uh, the office, uh, office automation, and all that stuff. And then I think open source is not at the, the short list of an IT department to, to go to because it's, it's, it's not easy. It, 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 it requires an investment. So it's logical. And both Robert, myself, and, uh, and also Stan Janssen that you mentioned, we're trying to be ambassadors to use more and more open source because we think it's important. When we look at folks like you, uh, in this case, you know, a project like Shapeshifter is not a product where you monetize from. So, uh, and also they can help other industries or other players, other DSOs as well. 
and then there's so much code to be written. So writing all that code yourself makes no sense when that you can no collaborate sense, no. exactly. and, and, and it's a win-win situation and you can also have a community and you can solve problems faster. So if I ask you, you know, what would be your advice to other companies who are very early stage of either their, because a lot of energy sector, they are going through their own transition as well, uh, that why they should embrace open source, what value open source brings uh, to their companies? Yeah, I, th- I think there are a lot of advantages. So. Of course, just one that we mentioned before is is working together and and creating a, like a win win situation uh, because you can you can also split the development. But I think it's also a nice way to be not uh, as to 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 have a, a, a an environment that is that is free and that that you can. Um, because the people that are in an open source community are really have an, an how do I call it. Um, a motivation to to add something to that to that uh, open source community, uh, and not only about the money, but also because they they want to attribute something to, in this case, to the energy transition. So you have very uh, you have very easy access to motivated people that will help you to create like an open source project. So I think that's really nice to see. Yeah, I don't know if I have the saying correct in English, but there is a saying that says uh, alone. You're faster, but together you will get further. Uh, I think there's nothing in the world that you can do alone anymore. So I think there's a necessity to be open to each other, embrace each other, and then work together because it will get you further. Of course, when you hit GA, what kind of things you folks are working on where you're like, hey, in the next month, this is the challenges, these are the problems, these are features that we should be building. Just give us a glimpse. One of the, the not technical part is communication. Because of course, when you're developing the, 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 the open source uh, project and it's not ready for use, then you are really reluctant to communicate because you are a little bit afraid of, of, uh, of communication. So I think the next most important thing is to communicate that uh, that the library is ready and that it can be used. So that's that for me. That's that's priority one. Um, and for, maybe for the technical part, uh, Daniel, you can you can add something to that. What we're trying to do, and we're already back working on it for several years. So we started the first experiments with the protocol about in 2016. You get a little bit blind, and now we are having new people performing the implementation. So they have a fresh look and they notice and ask some questions that we don't see anymore. So what we're trying to do now is that all the questions that the new people have while they're implementing it, that we try and uh, contribute that to the documentation of the Linux Foundation Energy Shapeshifter library. So whenever somebody is going to implement it anew, that there is no discussion about an interpretation anymore. So we're trying to clarify the documentation of Shapeshifter by using the experiences of our people that are now working on it for us that are bringing it into production. So uh, that, that's what we're trying to do. That's important. I just want to add, add one thing, and it's uh, at this moment, Shapeshifter uh, library is only Java. So we also want to add a Python uh, library to it. So that's also one thing that we want to add uh, the, 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 this year. Uh, and when we look at projects like these, of course, the project start with solving a specific problem. But when you put something in open source, suddenly a lot of folks, they say, hey, you know what? I can use this project in my use case. And it happens. I mean, Linux kernel is one of the best examples out there. So if I ask you, uh, who else do you think can benefit from this project where you'll say, hey, you folks should also come and you know use this project? Yeah, that's a good one. We now identified already two use cases. What we are doing now is, is something that we uh, that we strategically chose for within Inexus is capacity limit contracts. That's actually a second use case that we also found a purpose for with Shapeshifter because the first use case is more like communicating about flexibility and asking somebody, hey, can you help me out? And now we're using that same protocol, so we're reusing it as a, a, a way of limiting people that we have contracted to limit their power. So whenever we come up with a new use case, we try to implement it. And if we talk to somebody that, that might also benefit from that use case, then yeah, we, we also uh, communicate that. Who should get involved in the project, not just like to leverage the project, but who should you think that these are the right folks to get involved in the project? I think that's a very important question because what we are missing right now is the flexibility providers. So we really need aggregators and uh, service providers that are going to use the protocol 
on the other side, so not on the DSO side, but on the flexibility provider side. So we really want to that they join also the technical steering committee and work together with us to like, uh, yeah, make the protocol even better, make Shapeshifter even better. If I generalize. When we look at. Uh, L- LF Energy, you, there are so many different projects. But when I look at, you know, a lot of, I also cover cloud and I always talk about a stack, you know, the stack of application that are, they like work together with you. So, I mean, the best is the LAMP stack if you're in Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. So if you look at LF Energy project and if you're looking at this sector, um, do you have any kind of vision where, you know, these projects can work together in a very coherence and help instead of like, you know, trying to patch and creating a, Frankenstein monster where everybody's trying to solve their own problem. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think I think yes. I think when somehow we could have like an instruction for aggregators or, or flex providers that they can easily use the different uh, shapes of the the, 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 the different elevator projects uh, as one. So open staff and open LDR and shapeshifter, and they just have to click on one button and it is installed. So like a vision for the future, then it would be really easy for them to join like the, the open source community and to, you, to really use the, 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 the projects. Daniel, do you think any work is going on when you, as you said, you're in Paris also, when you talk that, hey, yeah, yes, we should, because the LF Energy itself is a relatively new project, new foundation. We're seeing that right now we are solving basic problem, but you know, just, Folks have started to think about better integration or kind of build a stack. Where, uh, what kind of discussions are you hearing there? I think there's a, there's a, a good opportunity in uh, combining multiple LFE uh, suite uh, products that are there together because there is a basic necessity. If you look at everybody needs forecasting, let's all use open staff, then we can all make those models better and uh, if we have something that goes wrong we can help each other um, everybody needs to communicate from an aggregator to a dso let's use shapeshifter for that um, if you look at the the aggregator they have a need to communicate to the flexibility that they can provide the reconnections Let, let's use open adr for that it's already used in uh, across the globe in america they use it so in the united states um, let, let's work together. What we notice is that uh, let's also work more closely together because some of the DSOs in the Netherlands, they are already combining, they, they already have a strategic vision on using open source and they are already trying to combine those products. If we as Inexus also would join forces with them and also combine multiple sources together, that would also already greatly help. Robert, Daniel, thank you so much for taking time out today and not only talk about the, of course, company Shapeshifter project, but also a larger problem. And Daniel and Robert, of course, thank you for call to action and also how uh, to kind of create a very coherent, you know, uh, ecosystem of LF Energy projects. Uh, so thanks for that vision as well. And I would love to uh, talk to you folks again whenever uh, Daniel update to the project. But I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you very much for the interview. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us.